This right here is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. It is the third folding phone that I have reviewed, and it is the second flip phone. And it's the best of that bunch, but that's not saying much. The weird thing about this phone is that it doesn't feel all that special. It's kind of normal, but for folding phones, normal might not be that bad. I want to explain what I mean by that, but let's just be clear that normal does not mean that it's good enough to buy. I mean, look, you already know where this video is going to end up. Basically, nobody should spend $1,380 on this phone. So when I say this phone feels normal, I mean that it performs normally, and I have pretty normal complaints about things like the camera. And it also looks kind of super normal. I think normal is an important step for folding phones. It means that you could actually imagine buying it instead of just treating it like a concept phone. Anyway, let's get into the screen because it has been the source of some controversy with this phone. So it really is glass that folds, but to make glass bend, you have to make it really, really thin. Samsung's ultra thin glass is 30 microns thick, which is in the range of a very thin human hair. And that means that it doesn't really hold up like the glass that you're used to on a smartphone screen. Glass this thin is obviously gonna be really delicate. A tiny nick or a scratch, and it'll lose its structural integrity and crack when you try and bend it. So Samsung put a protective plastic coating on top of it. And that coating, well, it's fairly soft. It feels like a screen protector. So put all that together and what it means is that this thing can pick up indentations from your fingernail if you press into it too firmly and it definitely will not hold up to serious scratching. You've probably seen a Jerry Rig Everything video that shows this point way better than I could. So what's the point of all of this effort if the screen scratches just as easily and it could get punctured really easily anyway? Well, Samsung gets to say that it's glass. That's one reason. For me, the big difference is that it does feel firmer under my thumb than other plastic screens. It just feels a little more solid. It's not as solid as the glass on your current phone, but it's a step in the right direction. Now don't hold me to this, but I think the glass might help a little bit with overall sharpness and clarity too. Now, as for the crease, it's there. I see it when I look for it, but I don't see it when I'm not looking for it. But that might just be my brain compensating for it, like at a blind spot. You know, I mentioned this in my Razer review, but I'm gonna say it again. I genuinely don't know what the standard for these phone screens should be. I mean, take a look at this bezel. It is a big, dumb plastic rail that holds the screen down. And on a non-folding phone, I would definitely make fun of this bezel. But here, it keeps the screen down, and it also keeps the phone from clacking into itself when you fold it. So. Should I make fun of it? Probably not. And as for overall screen quality, it's better and sharper than a razor. Yep. But it obviously can't stand up to like a regular Samsung screen. Let's move on to the next unique thing about this phone, which is the hinge. There are four things to know about it. One, it's pretty stiff. It makes the phone really hard to flip out one-handed. You can do it, but it's kind of hard. Two, Samsung says the main reason the hinge is so stiff is so that you can stand it up like this in this thing they call flex mode, which lets you do stuff with the top half of the screen. You can use it for taking photos and duo calls, and it's kind of good for watching YouTube. And I mean, I don't know, propping your phone up is kind of a hassle sometimes, but this solution is just overkill. Three, there is a gap when the phone is closed, and that is a little bit scary because the screen is fragile, remember? On the bright side, the gap is narrow enough so that it doesn't add that much thickness when it's fully closed. It's not like offensive to me. Fourth, Samsung has added like brushes and caps and other gigaws to keep dust and dirt out of the hinge mechanism. Will that work? I don't know. It's been fine for the four or five days that I've been using this, but it definitely didn't hold up to I fix it, putting it in a plastic bag with a bunch of purple dust and shaking it. But admittedly, that's a very extreme test. Add those four things together, and what you get is that this is the best hinge ever on a folding phone, which means, what exactly? I don't know. The screen is also the best screen ever on a folding phone too, and so what? What counts as good or even good enough for a foldable phone in terms of durability and screen quality? I think it is still too early to say that we have a real baseline to judge these folding phones against. So here's what I'll say. I do think the screen looks good enough for folding phones, but I don't think it's durable enough to recommend. And the hinge, well, just don't put it in a bag of dust. 
Now, this might surprise you, but really the biggest problem I have day to day with the overall design is that the fingerprint sensor on the power button here on the side is just, it's too hard to reach. It's too high up, especially if you have small hands. And if you're left-handed, I mean, forget about it. You gotta hold it in a really weird, wacky way. I also don't really love this teeny tiny little outer screen. It's fine for showing the time and it can show icons for your notifications and play pause controls, but it actually sucks for showing the content of your notifications and it really doesn't work as a selfie viewfinder all that well. Which brings me to the camera. It's good, but it can't hang with the best. Now, my hope was that these two 12 megapixel cameras on the back of the Z Flip would at least be on par with last year's Galaxy S10. And too often, they just can't. Samsung kind of seems to be back to its old Samsung ways of over smoothing photos. So it's kind of annoying because I thought Samsung had learned its lesson with this stuff. It just seems to be worse on sharpness in the details than even Samsung's other phones like the S10 or the Note 10. And compared to the iPhone 11 Pro, which costs less than this phone with the same amount of storage, this phone loses every time, especially at night. Look, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. The cameras aren't terrible. They're just not what I hoped they would be, which was around 2019 flagship levels. There is a camera mode for taking selfies with the main camera, but it only shoots square images. You can also set the outer screen to show a little preview and a timer if you prop the phone up in flex mode. and. Sure, that's neat, you can run and take a selfie, but on the other hand, this phone is so slippery, it could slide off whatever you set it on before you can get the shot. But here's the weird thing. Set aside the $1,400 price tag just for a second, and most of my complaints about this camera are like, normal. These cameras are good, they're just not keeping up with the times. And that means that we're in the zone of doing normal phone criticism now, instead of the wacky land of hinges and folding screens that might break and whatever. Here's another normal thing, battery life. It's fine. I can get through a day pretty easily with four and even five hours of screen time, plus decent standby time. It's not gonna hold up to really intense use all day, but for this size of a phone, I'm pretty happy. I also like that there's wireless charging and it makes a perfect nightstand clock in this flex mode with the always on screen. I also have no complaints about performance either. It is a totally normal Snapdragon 855 Plus processor with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Those are last year's best specs instead of this year's best specs, but that doesn't matter. I could use this phone all day, every day. I have no speed complaints. Okay, so is the Galaxy Z Flip a normal phone? Of course not. It folds. It has a 30 micron thick glass screen that has a plastic layer on top of that. It is way more fragile than whatever phone you have right now. It costs $1,380 for a phone that has a camera that's honestly a little bit meh. But after using it for nearly a week, it felt pretty normal. And that's an important step for these folding phones. The goal is to make them just another normal, reasonable option for people that have small pockets and that wanna carry around a bigger phone that actually fits in them. But Samsung really isn't there yet. If these phones are ever gonna stop being just expensive curiosities, they have to start being a little boring and the Z Flip is getting there. It's, it's kind of a little boring. But that doesn't mean that it's normal yet. And that doesn't mean you should buy it. It's still just a curiosity, even with that glass screen. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I have great news. I think this is the last folding phone we're gonna have to talk about for a while. Up next is the Galaxy S20, and I'm very excited to test that out.